Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Be attentive to what the Spirit of God is going to be saying to you through me. It's not me saying it. Trust the Spirit of God to minister through me. I'm the, I'm the human vessel that he's using at this moment. Amen. And so if, if God can speak through a jackass... He certainly can speak through me. Amen. 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 You know, you remember the prophet of old in, in the Old Testament, you know, he was going to, you know, going in one direction. The Lord said, you know, you know, don't, don't, don't go there. Don't go that way. Don't go that way. And he, t you know, he was riding his mule and the mule kept acting all contrary and everything. He hit the mule and come on now. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the mule just ran him up against the wall again. And then the mule turned around and started talking to him. Now, my thing was, why didn't he think that that was odd? You know, because they ain't been talking. You know, but, you know, the Spirit of God can speak through and use anything Amen. to speak. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So, if he can use the Spirit of God, he can use me. Amen? So, be in agreement with me that the Spirit of the Lord will use me to speak a word in season. That'll be uh, right, what, right down your alley and what you need. Amen? Hallelujah. So we're very grateful and thankful to all of you who have come out, and I believe God's going to speak a word to you tonight. So before we go and get into the word of God, uh, we're going to just come to the throne in prayer and believe God. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Holy Father, that the, the, the interest of, of your word gives light and gives understanding even unto the simple. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Father, I ask you right now to use my lips, process thoughts through my mind. Father, help me to speak a word that goes right to the heart of every situation, of every person in this building. Father, I pray that no one under the sound of my voice leave without having something being said to them that's going to get them to the next level in you. Get them, propel them, and, and promote them and encourage them, Father, through your word, through your minister word. And Father, we'll be careful to give your name all the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. In his name we pray. And everybody in, an, in agreement with that prayer said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So praise the Lord, glory to God. As we, as we stated before, we're very, very happy that you made it out to be with us tonight. And uh, there, is a, there is a word from heaven for you in this place tonight. Amen. Tonight, if you, if you, if you brought any, uh, if you're going to take notes, uh, we're going to be talking about speaking your faith. We're going to be talking about confessing the word of God. Um, you know, as I, as I started to uh, meditate on the things of God and, and, and see what direction he would have me to go in tonight, he impressed in my heart. And he wanted me to remind the people, that's all of you. He wanted me to remind our people that, you know, we need to be diligent concerning what we say. And not just to let anything fly when we talk. You know, because a lot of times in our culture, in our society, and, you know, when we get around our friends and family and relatives or whatever, we just, we just, we just talk how we talk. You know, we just having conversation. You know, but, you know, more times than not, we're, we're repetitively speaking things that are contrary to what we are believing. And we don't even realize it. So... The Lord wants me to remind you to guard your words. The Bible tells you to guard your words with all diligence for out of, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it ought to flow the issues of life. Amen. You find that over in Proverbs. Amen. And so <clears throat> the Bible also says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we want to challenge you this evening, you know, concerning the things that you're speaking because, you know, out of the, out of, out of your heart you're speaking 
And so what do you want in your heart? You want the word of God, things that are, things that are of the spirit, things that are going to be a blessing not only to your life but to the lives of others. You want those things recurring or regurgitating out of your heart when you speak. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. So we want, we want everybody to, to, to take good notes. Amen. And if you don't do nothing else, just write down the scriptures. Amen. So you can go back and you can start rehearsing some of those things in your heart, you know, in your quiet time and start uh, understanding what the Spirit of God is saying to you right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. You know, <clears throat> I want you to take good notes because you will be tested on this material. Amen. Hallelujah. You will be tested on this material. Now, I don't have no, I don't, I, you know, we're not, we're not going to quiz you after the service. You know, that's not the kind of test we're talking about. There is, there is, there is the one who tests you. His name is Satan. Hallelujah. And, you know, when he came to Jesus, you know, he was, he was testing Jesus. Amen. And we're going to be looking at that. Episode two. Oh man, look at there. There's a moth. He's flying around. Going to disturb the service. We're going to clap him in here in a minute. But anyway, hallelujah. But like I said, if you don't do anything, just, just write down the scriptures. Amen. All right. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn with, with me to uh, Proverbs 18 and 21. Proverbs 18 and 21. When you have it, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Proverbs is after Ecclesiastes, right before Psalms. Amen. Yeah, we got some seasoned, seasoned Christians in here. I know I don't need to say that. Hallelujah. But it reads as such. And when you have it, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. It says death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And as we forestated, we are talking about speaking your faith. Now, you know, as we forestated, you know, the devil's going to come with a test. He's going to challenge you because when the word comes forth, the Bible says he comes immediately for the word's sake immediately you know so you might not even get to the parking lot good before you you're challenged with something that's going to be in this message tonight you know so so be vigilant be vigilant not be vigilant because that would be like being a villager and be vigilant amen be focused be attentive amen First Corinthians 10, 13 says, There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God, who is faithful, will not suffer you to be tempted above that year able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. First Corinthians 10, 13 says that. And then also, now remember this. It is God who allows the test. He authorizes the test. Over in Matthew 4 and 1, it says Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So who, who is our example? Jesus is our example. And so if he was tested, if he was tempted, if he was tried, the servant is not above his master. Amen? The Bible says. So you're going to have some challenges. You're going to have some trials. You're going to have some tests. You're going to have, some, have to have some things that you can come, that you're going to go through. Because the Lord is going to allow it. But we said, as it says over in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it's common. It's common. You, it ain't nothing happening under the sun. It's brand new. You ain't having the, the only one of those things going on in your life. Not only are many people having this test, having this trial, but they are overcoming it through the word of God. That's why, that's why it's in here. It's in here to instruct us, to give us encouragement, to give us direction, to let us know, hey, yes, you're going through that, but you know, this other folks been through this too, and they came out smelling like a rose. Amen? And that's possible for you as well, as you trust the word of God, and you do what the word says. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. That's where your power is. That's where your authority is. That's where your victory is in doing the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we forestated, we were talking about speaking your faith. Now your words have the ability. Your words have the ability to enhance and bless your life and your situation. Your words also have the ability to hinder, degrade, or worsen, worsen your situation just by the way you talk. You know, you hear people, you talk to people, you have conversations and stuff, you know, through your day to day, and people will say pretty much whatever's on their mind. You know, they'll have conversation. They'll say, man, you know what? Oh, my, my head is just hurting so, so bad. You know, I, I, I need to get some Tylenol or something because this is just hurting me so bad. You know, and that's a true statement. They, their head is bothering them. You know, they, they, having, they having an issue going on. But, you know, you shouldn't stop there. As a child of God, we have something that supersedes all of that. The Bible says in 2 uh, uh, Corinthians, Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. So there are things that's going to be going on in your physical body, but you're not to let that be the dominating force in your life. You're not, it's, the Bible doesn't say you're not going to be faced with situations and circumstances. It's reminding us that all these, although these things are happening, you are not to be governed by those things that are happening. And we're going to get to some other scripture here. It talks about what you're supposed to do when your test and trial comes, when things come your way. <clears throat> Many in the body of Christ are using their words all wrong. It's true that they have confessed Christ as Lord and Savior, and they've believed in their heart, which is good. However, they have totally discarded this template for their everyday life. Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and received in our heart that God have raised him to, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that. Well, it's, this is more than just a salvation scripture. This is more than just receiving Jesus. This is the template for your Christian life. This is how you are to conduct yourself. You are to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart according to the word of God. That applies not only to salvation, but every area of your life. Amen. And many people just it just flies right over their head. They don't even understand what the word of God is saying to them in this passage of scripture. Amen. Amen. But are there are other passages of scripture that tell you the exact same thing. It's just restating the same thing in a different manner. Amen. It's not solely for salvation. This template of speaking and believing should become the very essence of the rest of your Christian experience. Amen. And so what we're endeavoring to do is just share with you some of those things that, you know, we might have we might have kind of, you know, let get by us, you know, over the years. Or some of us, you know, as, as those are, as those are watching by the Internet, amen, maybe brand new Christians. They may not hear these things for the may not have heard these things yet. And so maybe we're speaking some things that they're getting you know, for the first time. And so, you know, I some I know some have been, you know, saved, you know, my one of my pastors used to say, you know, you got saved with Abraham been saved so long, you know, but you know, it's always good to rehearse and uh, resharpen the things of God in your heart and mind. Amen. Because it's easy for stuff to get past you, you know, because you just go on and you do the day to day and you do, you know, you do the quote unquote, the church thing, you know, but you know, your Christian walk is not the church thing. It's a God thing. Amen. And this is going to carry you through eternity. Amen. And it's supposed to get you safely from here to eternity. Amen? Amen? It is your decision. It is your walk with God now that's going to determine what's going to happen when you hit the dirt. Amen? And your spirit leaves your body and goes up to be with him in the heavens. Amen? Amen. Because this place is not our home. We are just pilgrims. Amen? amen. Can you say amen? amen? There is somewhere else we're going besides, besides down to the funeral home. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. You know, I hear Christians all the time talking about situations and circumstances that they're facing. They talk about how bad they feel. They talk about their bosses and how they're being mistreated. They talk about their children and how they're doing poorly in school, you know. And all those things may be, may be happening. 
But let me take this moment here to, to make a distinction for you. You can say what the status of a situation is without owning it personally. You can say what's going on without that becoming part of your confession or a part of what you believe. Amen. Although these things may be happening, that doesn't line up what you're believing God for. Amen. So you don't want to, oh, you don't want to emphasize the negative side of things, you know, because that's not what you're believing God for. Amen. So here's an example. The doctor said, you know, he's diagnosing you with cancer. He's saying, you know, you've got lung cancer. You know, um, you know, we found a mass. We found a, uh, a mass here. We're going to do some biopsy. We're going to do some things here. We, we, did the, we did all the tests, and it shows that this is cancerous. This is, it's, it's not benign. It's malignant, and it's growing. And, uh, you know, if, if things don't change immediately, uh, we don't think you're going to live longer than six months. You know, that's not good. Amen? Do you know when that report comes, that's not good. But, but, say everybody say but. but. We have the word of God. Amen? Amen? And it supersedes all those things in the natural realm. Oh, yes. It has power to change every situation in your life. Amen. Your physical situation, your financial situation, your marital situation. Every situation in your life can be changed through the word of God. Amen? Amen? And so that's what we put our trust and reliance in, is in the word of God that has been changing lives and making things better from before the time you got here and long after you gone. Jesus Terrace is coming. Amen? Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. So the doctor's giving you this report, and it's a, true, it's a, it's a naturally true statement. But you don't just want to leave that situation there. As a child of God, as a, as, as a believer of, in the word of God, that's not where you leave that situation. That's not where you stop that conversation at. And you, just don't, you, know, you don't just put your face in your hands and start crying. You know, crying without hope. Crying without you know, any, any other avenue to be delivered. You don't want to do that. You don't just want to leave it like that. We're talking about speaking your faith. The doctor said, I have cancer, and then you finish it off like this, but I don't receive that. Sickness cannot dwell in my body. By Jesus' stripes, I was healed. Amen. As a child of God, that's your responsibility. Now, have people died? Yes. Are people still going to die? Yes. But this word is still true. This word is still true. It's still active. It's still alive. It's still more, more potent than any medication or drug you can ever, ever put in your body. Amen? Amen? Yes. And I know, I, I, I personally know people who have gone on. You know, and, and people say, well, you know, they were a Christian. They, 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 were, they were saying the word. They, they had faith. What happened? Well, you know what? The Bible says it this way. The secret thing belongs to the Lord. And you only know the part that you know, which is very little. Amen? Amen. You don't know what they was talking about when they wasn't around you. You don't know what their confession was around others. All you know is what, you was, what they said around you. They put on this strong thing around you like, you know, I'm believing God. You know, I was I was praying the other night and the Lord spoke to me. You know, you're going to be healed. You know, this, that and the other. And, you know, and all of these these things. And they, and they put in this, you know, you are you're excited with them. Yeah, God is a healer. You know, you like praise the Lord. You know, yes, you, they believe in this thing, man. I'll, and then when they go on then when they die, you know, you're like. But they will believe in God. I don't even know why I'm going this way. I'm helping somebody. I don't even know why I'm going. I don't, even, I don't, even, I don't know why they died. You know, they were, they, were, they were just so strong in the word and strong in the Lord. You know, why? how come they died? Well, you know what? It didn't have nothing to do with what God's word say. Because if Jesus said you were healed over 2,000 years ago, you were. And, and, he, and he plainly say, God is not a man that he should lie, not, neither the son of a man that he should repent. Have he said it? Shall he not do it? Have he not spoken it? Shall he not make it good? So 
It's not on God's end. So guess what? It's on their end. But if they made it to heaven, uh, the Bible says death is gain. Amen. Amen. I'd rather depart and be with Christ, you know, Apostle Paul said, you know. But, you know, don't get yourself all caught up in, in why it didn't happen for somebody else. You just make sure you lined up so it happens for you. Amen. Because the only person you can live for is you. You can't live for your brother. You can't live for your mama. You can't live for your auntie. You can't live for nobody else. You got to live for you. And you got to accept and receive this word for you. Amen. amen. Can I get a good amen? amen? Hallelujah. And so, you know, you can accurately state the report, but then come back and say what you believe. But I believe Jesus is my healer. And you stay with that. And you don't necessarily have to quote chapter and verse in every conversation you have with people. But you better know where to find that promise in the word. Amen? Because you're just blowing in the wind. Because see the devil, what did we say earlier? The devil comes for the word's sake. Amen? And if you ain't got no word, man, he's going to wear your head out. Because he's coming for the word. He only respects the word. Amen? He does not respect your shout. He does not respect your dance. He does not respect your service in the church. You know, all these things are good. And you should do all these things. However, the devil does not respect any of that. You know, the devil, you know, you come, you talking about, you know, how, you know, you're healed by Jesus Christ. The devil come and say, huh, well, let me put a little more pain on you right here. He, 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 it ain't time to, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Doing your little dance and shout. You better put the word on him. You better put the word of God on him. Because he ain't got to respect that. Because he'll sit there and dance with you. He'll grab your arm. <laughs> he'll dance with you. Then as soon as you get all out of breath, he'll hit the other leg. Won't even be able to stand up good. You got to speak the word concerning your situation. And then you will have a dance. And then you will have a shout. Amen. Amen. You have the real deal and not this fabricated message what people do. It'll be genuine because the word of God is true and you know it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. That was good. That was good. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Now, you better know where to find that promise in the word. Why? Because the devil is coming back. To challenge what you believe. He's coming back to challenge you. With signs following. Yeah. He's coming back. You say what do you mean preacher with signs following? Your situation may take a downward turn. But it doesn't mean that the situation can't get better. On the contrary. It just simply means that there must be a greater power at work. That has the ability to turn that situation. Into another direct, a, a different direction. That greater power is the word of God. And that word needs to be in you. Amen? Amen. You know, Jesus didn't argue with the devil. When Jesus in the, was in the wilderness, let's go ahead and turn there. Matthew 4 and 1. We're going to hit it. Because it's very important that you under, we understand, you know, where your authority rests at. Amen? As a child of God. As a believer of the word of God. Matthew 4 and 1. Go ahead and turn there, and I'm going to turn there as well myself. Amen. Let me put my glasses on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Matthew 4 and 1. Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit. And we're going to go down to the 11th verse. Amen. Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit. Led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he, he afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him and said, if, huh, see, hear that? He talking to, the, talking to the son of God. He said, if thou be the son of God. He said, if. He didn't say, well, you know, I know you're the son of God. He said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, 
man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he said unto him, if thou be the son of God, he, there you go, if again. Like he don't know who he is. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy, thou dash thy foot against the stone. Seventh verse, Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. Somebody say it's written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve. Then the devil, then the devil leaves him. And behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. Now, Jesus is showing us right here. You know, number one, the devil's coming. He's coming. But don't worry about that. You got the word of God. You got the power to take, take care of him every single time. And you ain't got to do what you ain't got to go in the in the in the in the gym and, and, and bench 300 pounds to deal with the devil. No, no, no. This this battle is spiritual. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Amen. And what is that armor? It's spiritual armor. Amen? And we have the ability to deal with everything the devil comes through the word of God. When the devil comes, you get the word on him. You put the word on him, he'll smoke his hind end every time. Jesus didn't say, Jesus didn't say, you know, when the devil came, do you know who I am? I'm God. The whole earth would have shook. Because it's still a true statement. But he didn't come as God in the earth realm. He came as a man anointed by the Holy Spirit to show you and I how we are to conduct ourselves. Because, see, we're not God. We're the children of God. And it says, it says, ye are gods, but we are lower. But we have been equipped and empowered through the word of God, through the blood of Jesus. So when we receive Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we, be, we, we are engrafted in and we are empowered through the name of Jesus. And so everything that he is, we are. Because we have inherited this through the blood of Christ. Amen? Amen. So, when the devil come to tempt Jesus, Jesus said, it's written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word, every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. He's, the template is this. You speak the word. Know what the word of God says. You first got to know it in order to speak it. You can't speak something that you don't know. So what does that mean? You have to become a student of the word. Does that mean you have to know all the, <laughs> everything written in this thing? This word? Do you have to know everything word verbatim? No. But guess what? The Lord will show you what's going to apply to you. And you remember it by studying it and meditating on it. It says over in Joshua 1 and 8, it says, but this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success, Joshua 1 and 8 says. So, when the devil comes, you tell him what the word says. And guess what? The devil just don't come one time. He comes again. And then he comes again. And then he comes again. He's persistent. You're just not going to run him off one time. He's coming back. Amen? But you still have what's necessary to beat him every time. And that's the word of God. 
You spend time in the Word. You spend time studying and meditating on the Word. You say, well, you know, I'm very busy. I don't really ain't got time for all that. Well, you ain't got time not to. Because after your head get wore out, after that situation goes critical mass on you, you be, you be wondering, where did I put that Bible at? Good day in the morning. Whew, man. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know. You're going to get in that word then. Don't wait till then. Go ahead and have yourself built up, girded up, ready, ready for the battle. You know, a soldier, you know, a soldier doesn't, you know, get their weapons ready, you know, as the battle's going on. You got to have your weapons ready before the first shot get fired. You know, you got to have your, you got to have your weapon clean. You got to have your bullet. You got to have all your uh, artillery. You got to have, you know, your uniforms got to be right. You know, you got to have all your equipment ready. Amen? Because when the shots start flying, you can't be like, man, where I put my bullet? Oh, God damn, I'm on. How do I have a, oh, oh, oh. You can't be, you can't be looking around. Now, where I put, where, where I put my gun? <laughs> oh, no. Man, you, man, it's too late. Man. You need to be ready. Amen. I know we got some servicemen in here. You know, you got to have, you got to have your weapon ready. You can't be, you can't be looking around now. You're going to go home in a box. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, as we examine what went on here in this Matthew, the fourth chapter, there are a couple things I want to point out to you. Number one, the devil's going to try to make you doubt who you are. He did it to Jesus. That's the Lord of all creation, the master. If you don't think he's going to try to make you doubt who, if he didn't try to, if he had tried to make Jesus doubt who he was, how much more he's going to try to make you doubt who you are in him? He's going to try to make you doubt who you are. Well, that, that Bible stuff don't work. You know, quote the word don't work. You know, well, of course he wants you to get off of that because that's the thing that's going to send him packing. That's the thing you need to, you, if you're going to major in anything in life, major in being a child of God, a student of the word. If you're going to major in something, I learned that early on because that's the only thing that has the ability to change your situation in a way that cannot be undone. Amen? Amen. The Lord said it this way. He said, behold, I hold a door that no man can shut, and lo, I open doors that no man can close. Amen? That's how powerful this thing is. Nobody can change your circumstance but you and the word of God. Amen? Number two, you got to know what's written. Like we, said, like we stated, you know, Jesus, Jesus didn't come with a good dance and a good shout. Ha, devil, ha, 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 get you here. You know, he didn't do that. He said it's written. He said, he told the devil what's written. And then you got to say, what is written. Amen? You got to know what is written, and then you have to say what is written in the word of God. Amen? And the devil will also try to get you to trade God's provision for the provision, for his provision, which is a lie and only good for a season. What do we mean? Well, you know what? You know, you ain't got to go to church. You ain't got to, you know, serve the Lord. You ain't got to tithe. You ain't got to do all that that's unnecessary. You know what? You can go to the bar and get you a drink, kick back. You know, you know, so you know, uh, so and so is going to be down there, and you really like her, and you know, I think she's feeling you now. You know, especially since she done put a couple of drinks in her. You know, so y'all should just get together and hang out, and have a good time. You know what? And 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 I, I, I and and you know she's fine. You know. And, you know, hey, just kick back and relax. You know, put your, a few drinks back, man, feel good. Enjoy life. He'll give you an alternative. He'll give you an alternative that seems good, but it's only good for a season. I said it's only good for a season. The Bible says it's only good for a season. And when that season is up, man, you're in a world of pain now. 
And, and, the, and, the, and the lie of the devil is that the season is not going to end. It's gonna, this is the way it's going to be. This is the way it's going to stay. But we have too many, too many accounts through the word of God that that season ends. And it ends horribly. Look at the, look at the, the, the prodigal son. He said, he said, Dad, give me, my, give me my inheritance. You know, I'm going to go out to the club here. And I'm going to meet these strippers. And, uh, and we're about to see what's up with that. You know, but his, his father, as wise as he was, didn't say, you know, son, you know, you, you, uh, you're about to mess up. He let him go on. You know, and that's like the character and nature of God. God will, God will let you make your own decision. He say, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. And, and he didn't get mad at the son. He said, you know, you know what? Go ahead and take it. Sent him on his way. He went out, met Bubblicious, the stripper, and parted with her and her two sisters, and they took all his money. Got him drunk, took all his money. Now he's now he in, the, in the hog pen. You know, all that, all, that, all, that, all that fine Ralph Lauren polo stuff he was wearing is all tattered and worn. You know, he was, he was smooth with waves in his head and, and cool. You know, but now, he, you know, he looked, like, he looked like the New Jack City. All messed up. But you know what? He come to himself. Amen? He said, how many servants in my father's house fare better than this? You know, I could just go back and work for my daddy. You know, and... You know, I can just be a servant in the house. And this is way better than, than eating this pig slop. Amen? Amen? But you know what? That sin was only good for a season. But you know, the mercy of God, the mercy of God, somebody say the mercy of God, was made available. Amen? And we ought to thank God for the mercy of God. Because we all mess up. We all fall short. We all miss the mark at some point but the mercy of God. Amen? Amen? And so, you know, not, not stating that you're not going to have a problem, but if you run into a situation, if you run into a, if you get overtaken in the fall, there is the mercy of God. And don't sit there and wallow in that, in that fallen state. Run back to God. Run back to the blood. Run back to the Lord. Say, Lord, I messed up. Forgive me. And 1 John 1 and 9, which is written to the Christians, it says if, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not just some, but all. Can you say all? all. Say all again. All. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Amen? So, and we're moving right along here. Hallelujah. Satan mimics the things of God. But you know, the devil will try to get you to trade God's provision. But you know, the power that works in us, Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. You have the power to change every circumstance and situation in your life, and it's contained in that word. But you got to know what's in there. you got to know what's written in order to, to plug in and activate that power in your life. Amen? Amen? So become a student of the word. Dedicate yourself to become a student of the word of God, to know what's in God's word. So when the devil comes with his stuff, you can put him on his heels. Amen? Amen. You're not going to put him on his heels with, a, you know, with something that T.D. Jakes said. I like T.D. Jakes. The anointed man of God. But what T.D. Jakes said is not going to put the devil on the run. T.D. Jakes got to go to this word just like I do when the devil show up. Amen? Good shout and good dance is good. But that is not what's going to change your situation. Only knowing and operating in the word of God is what changes your situation. Amen? Hallelujah. 
So, as we forestated, Satan mimics the things of God. Satan has the ability to manipulate things in the earth system. Turn, turn with me to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, fourth verse. 2 Corinthians, fourth chapter, fourth verse. And it's talking about the devil here. When you have it, say amen. Second Corinthians, four, fourth chapter, fourth verse. It says, in whom the God of this world, little g, we're talking about Satan. The God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto him. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. For ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commended the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. You're going to have problems. Amen? This is what this saying right here. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. For we have the same spirit of faith. According as it is written. Where was it written at? This is old. We're going back to the Old Testament. The old and the new coming together right here. I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore speak. Mm, that's good right there. Knowing that we, he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sake, and the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but through our outward, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Listen to this. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So, you know, Scripture is telling us you're going to have situations and circumstances come up in your life. Some of them are going to throw you for a loop, or seemingly throw you for a loop. But you're not to pay attention to what you are witnessing with your five senses. What you can see, what you can hear, what you can smell, what you can taste, what you can touch. You're not to, you're not to allow that to be the dominating, driving, contributing factor of what's going on in your life. You're supposed to dial yourself back and come back to what's true and right, which is the word of God. 4 and 18 says, while we look not at which things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporal. The word temporal means subject to change. And we know that in this world system that we live in, things are subject to change all the time. I'm just <laughs> case in point. I didn't have to use reading glasses. But something changed. Amen? Things change all the time. Things are subject to change. So now, you know, I use some readers. Are you saying that the word of God is not working actively in your life to promote health and healing in your eyes, preacher? No, but I'm saying this. I'm saying this, the word of God is true. And when, and when I the purpose within myself to believe God for my eyesight, I put these glasses down. 
Some people don't even. Some people don't want to go that far with it. I'm 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 all in. I'm one of these guys that's all in concerning the Word of God. Amen. So I believe God for everything. I believe God in my money. I believe God in my physical body. I believe God in my marriage. I believe God concerning my children. I believe God for my whole life. Amen. And that's what this is here for, your whole life. Not just so that you have all your bills paid. Not just so you can have a house on the hill and two cars and a nice TV. All those things are nice. But guess what? There's so much more that the kingdom of God is, is guaranteeing you and showing that you ought to be actively pursuing. Not only for yourself, but for the lives of others as well. Jesus came for all men to be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave not his only begotten son. We know the scripture. That through him we might have life and have it more abundantly. So Jesus come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. But so that others could experience that abundant life as well. And people are eating from your tree. People are watching your life. We are the Bible calls living epistles. People are eating from your tree. They're noticing you. They may not ever say anything to you, but they're watching you. Soon as you said, I'm a, I'm a Christian, I love God. Or they see you sitting in church. And they see you on, on, on the, you know, the board. They're expecting you to conduct yourself a certain way. They're expecting you to act like Christ. You know, and, you know, it's very, very, very bad when, you know, someone in the church gets, uh, you know, accused of something. It's not, it's not as bad to be accused, but it's more, it's even worse when you're guilty of it. Somebody say amen. amen. But we don't want to be guilty. The accusation may come, but you just make sure that you're not guilty of that. Amen. amen? The Bible says that we are to be above reproach. Amen. We are con to conduct ourselves like Christ. Amen. Christian means to be christ Christian, which is to be Christ-like. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Once Satan realizes that he can get you to use your words wrongly, he makes sure that he sends people around you to assist, assist you with your negative confession. 2 Corinthians 4 and 18 tells us not to look at what we see because it's subject to change. We know that the situation can change. Why? Why do, how do we know that the situation can change? Because it was good and then it went bad. So we know that it can, it can change. So how much more should we be in agreement that it can change back? Amen? Because we know it can change. Hallelujah. And through the word of God, through exercising our faith in the word of God, it can change back. Amen? Remember this. You are going to have what you say. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, Verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. It says that in Mark eleven twenty three. I said write it down, because you can go back and look it up. Amen? Don't just take my word for it. Read the word. Find out if it's true for yourself. Too many Christians are relying on the pastor, the preacher, the prophet, the apostle to give them everything, all their spiritual food. No, you to feed yourself. Now you come to church, you get refilled. It's a refilling station. You get charged up so you can go back and minister to the world. Amen? So you can live this godly life in front of the world. Amen? But you want to put this word inside of you and keep it active. Amen? Keep it active. Say, keep it active. You need to keep the word active in your life. Amen. You know, this is, this is not just a Sunday and Wednesday, Wednesday thing. This is 24-7. Every day. All day. Word of God. Don't let this, let, let this lifetime, lifestyle slide away from you. Don't just let it be. Don't just, be, don't just casually serve God. 
be for real all the time. The world says it, keeping it 100. You want to you keep it 100 in this word. Amen? 24-7, all day, every day. Because that's how you reap the harvest and, and, and get the blessing of the Lord over your life and keep it active in your life. Amen? So remember, you're going to need to, you're going to have what you say. Now turn to your neighbor, say, say this. You're going to have what you say. Not what I say, but what you say. What you continually, consistently say is what will be manifest in your life. But here's the qualifier. As, you, as what you say lines up to the word of God, without the word of God, there is nothing to hold what you say in place. There is nothing that the angels can act on in your behalf. They listen to the voicing of the word of God. Turn over to Psalms 103 and 20. You mean angels, you know, angels are, are, are listening to us? Yes, they are. They are listening to you and recording every word. Psalms 103 and 20 says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Your angels, your angels, my angels, we all got our own angels. And they are working in our behalf as we go through. And some, some Christian angels ain't done nothing in a long time. They out of shape and, you know, they ain't done nothing. Because they ain't been saying nothing to get them activated, to get them moving. If it wasn't for the grace and mercy of God, you know, they can just get on another assignment with somebody that's doing something. Lord, they ain't saying nothing. They ain't talking about nothing. Could you give me somebody that's going to say what you say? And their life is a representation of that same thing. They, they defeated, they sick, they, they ain't got no peace, no joy. You know, you better not ask them for nothing because you might get cussed out. Yeah, Christians. And Christians still cuss. <laughs> oh, you just don't know. Yeah. Christians doing a lot of stuff they ain't got no business doing. You know, because they're not letting this be the God post for their life. Amen. They, did, they, they received Jesus and got their fire suit. They said, whew, at least I ain't, going, I ain't going to hell. You know, I received Christ. They said, thou shalt receive the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. Uh, you'll be saved. So I'm out. Going to the club. The Bible say, you know, I like to stick to what the Bible say. Because, you know, when you stick with the Bible, say, you know, there's, it's, these are not my words. These are the words of the Lord. Right. The Bible say many, there shall be many in that day that shall say, Lord, we've done, we've prophesied in your name. You know, we've, we've ministered in your name. We've done all these great, we laid hands on the sick. We've ministered to people and done all these great works. And the Lord say, I'm going to turn to you and tell you, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Well, that, that just messes up them grace folks. You know, them folks that's got this mantra like, like you can do whatever and, and, you know, still make it in. No, no. Gee, these are words of Christ. You know, so say it's going to be many, not just a few deranged folks. They're going to be many talking about, you know, Lord, you know, we held church every Sunday. You know, this one over here talking about, Lord, I baked pies at the sale. You know, I did this. I, you know, I hand out, I hand out scarves and stuff for the homeless. I did all, and all that's great. But your life didn't line up to what I told you to do. Amen. Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. If you love me, do what I said. I said, abstain from fleshly lust. He said, he, he, he said do not fornicate. He said, don't, don't. He said, if you love me, you're going to do what I say. Now, do you, get, do you get it all right from the giddy up? No. That's why there's mercy available to you. That's why his grace is there. But it's not so you can just keep right on. Amen. Amen. It's not so you can just keep right on and do what you do, you know, 
and say, well, you know, the Lord, the Lord know my heart. Yeah, he do. Yeah, yeah he do. And he know that you're going to do what you want to do, and you're not going to do what he said do. So we need, to, we need to be more diligent about doing what pleases the Lord. Amen? Because don't just think you're just going to make it in just because. Just because, you know, you know, you know, well, we've been members of this church for 50 years. Don't mean a thing. Don't mean a thing. You know, there's folks in hell right now mad because they thought they, they membership on the church roll ensured that they were going to get in. But they live like a dog. Don't work like that. Don't work like that. I didn't, I didn't come up with this. This was here before I, before I got here. This was here before I got here. I didn't set the standard. This is not my standard. This is already written. And you know the Lord's so wise and so smart. He, he made sure it was written so, you know, somebody else couldn't get the credit for it. Because, see, this is too high for a man to come up with. This standard is too high for men because if I wrote the Bible, the standard would be a lot lower. It would be like every man should have four wives, you know, and they can't talk unless they ask something, you know. And, you know, I should have, you know, and my wife should have to go to work and, and make all the money, you know, and pay the bills, and I kick back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but see, that's the, carnal, that's the carnal nature of man. You know, if a, if a lady wrote the Bible, she just had the same thing. I have a team of men working for me and want none of them ha be able to have, you know, marital relations. You know, they have to be eunuchs. You know. And they have to go and work and buy me diamonds and furs so I can kick back. That's the mind of, a, that's, the, that's the carnal nature of man. We, we selfish like that. Man is selfish like that. So this standard that we're talking about is, cannot be of man, of a man's mind or a man's intention or a man's desire. It's too high. It's too high. Amen? Amen. So I'm so thankful that it's higher than what I would have come up with. Because see, you know, it, it, you could tip the scales in your favor. See, this, the, this, this levels the playing field for everybody. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Everybody can be blessed. Everybody can attain. Everybody can, uh, you know, walk in the fullness and the goodness, goodness of the things of God because through the blood of Jesus, everybody has access. Amen? Amen. No one person, no one race, no one individual can say, I have the upper hand. Because in Christ. We all are available, we have the ability to achieve to the same level. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hebrews 1 and 14 says that there are ministering spirits sent forth to those who shall be the heirs of salvation. You must be persistent, you must be diligent, you must be consistent, unmovable, and patient. We need to develop stamina and endurance in the things of God. We understand this in natural things, don't we? You know, we have, to be, we have to be patient and diligent, you know, consistent. We have to have, you know, uh, be faithful in things. Just in natural things. You know, they don't pr promote you on the job, you know, when you're showing up late all the time. You know, you're 20 minutes late every day. You know, you take, you're taking an extended lunch, you know. You, come, you pull up on the parking lot, everybody working diligent and working hard. You, know, you show up 20 minutes late. You know, they say, where you been? Well, you know, they were slow at Wendy's. Really? You about to find yourself without a job. You know, and if you do keep the job, you got several reprimands. Of, I had to talk to them about being late, 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 late. You know. And then, then when it's time for, you know, your, your review, you know, you're sitting there like, well, um, and then you're sitting there mad because they're not going to give you a raise. Oh, oh, you got wind all in your jaw. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. We understand that in natural things. How much more in the kingdom of God do we need to be found, found faithful? 
Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We need to be diligent. Amen. It says over in Hebrews 11, 11 and 6, you know, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What was that? Or what's the operative word there? Diligent. You must be diligently a seeker of God. So it's real easy. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to do the things of God when you purpose within, in your heart and you set your, set your face like flint. You know, I, it, 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 may, it, it, it stirs up a, a holy indignation when, when I hear people say, you know, it's hard to serve the Lord. No, it's, it's hard to serve the other fellow. Because his stand is changing all the time. You know, you know, first, you know, he just said, you know, he just required you to have one drink. Now he requiring you to have five drinks. And, you know, he, he wanted you to, you know, to be with just one. Now you got to be with four more. You know, the stand is always changing. And it ain't never good. It's always leading you to a path of destruction. Amen. 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 But we serve a good and righteous and holy God. Amen. Amen. And he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So in closing, I want us to be reminded to speak what you believe and not what the situation is going on in your life if it doesn't line up to what you're believing God for. Begin to... To study the word of God, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, to study to show yourself approved. You know, workmen that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What does it mean, rightly dividing? Well, it means you can wrongly understand and comprehend the word of God if you don't spend the time to go line upon line to to put things in, in, in its proper context and setting when you're studying God's word. And remember this. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not. He doesn't hold anything back. That word upbraideth means hold anything. He doesn't hold anything back. So, if you don't understand something in the word, go to the Lord, ask him. He'll show you other scriptures that tie in and relate that are saying the same thing, but just expand your understanding more. But the main thing is just to, just to get in the Word and start reading. Start in the New Testament, start reading. Start finding out God speaks to you with just the, the... Understanding the Word of God is simple. It's not mystical. All you have to do is just start reading it, and understanding will come. Number one, you've got to be saved. Because, see... People are, you hear people all the time, well, I just don't understand that Bible. They go, well, are you saved? No, I ain't saved. I ain't never, you know, I ain't got, never got born again. Well, that's why you can't understand it. This word says you can't understand this unless you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are dead, you are dead in the water till you got that part down. Dead in the water. Amen. So I pray that something has been said tonight to, to encourage you, to stimulate your faith, to to show you what you need to do as, as a child of God, to get yourself in line with what he has for you, amen? Because God has good things in line for you, amen? He has good things in mind for you. He always does. He's a good father, and he loves his children. And we are the children of God. Say that with me. We are, we are. the children of God. God has great things for me. Because he loves me. He really loves me. He sent Jesus because he loves me. Amen. God bless you. I pray that something has been said to help you. And we thank you for being so attentive, coming out and being with us tonight. I pray that we've given you something that you can take back and chew on and meditate on. And it's going to give you what you need from the Lord. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, 
P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.